Brightness and contrast, levels and curves adjustments are all used to make corrections to an image. The brightness and contrast adjustment layer allows Photoshop users the ability to increase contrast, which means to increase the difference between the brightest part of the picture and the darkest part of the picture, and the overall brightness. This is the adjustment most new photo editors tend to use, but after learning how to use levels and curves, you'll find those adjustments do a much better job at fixing exposure issues in your image. The image on the top right side of the slide is having exposure issues. When it was captured, the camera, or probably the camera user, was unable to find a setting that would do a good job capturing the bright cloudy sky and the face of the church so only the sky was captured properly. A levels adjustment can be used to fix most of the issues with this image. Levels are a great way to set the brightest white point, the darkest black point, and to slide the midtone values back and forth until you get the color range you're wanting. This is especially effective with underexposed images. However, you'll notice I didn't have as much control over the sky as I would have liked to. A curves adjustment is similar to a levels adjustment. The curves adjustment allows for more detail editing. Different ranges in light and dark can be modified independently from one another. Notice the sky produces more detail in the curves adjustment. The easiest way to show key differences between brightness and contrast, levels, and curves adjustments is to jump over to Photoshop and get our hands dirty. So let's go ahead and do that. I went back to the Open Graphic Arts website and I pulled up these three images, the little castle gate entryway, uh, Welcome to Aberdeen, and uh, this image of a slot canyon in southern Utah. And I want to show you the difference in applying a brightness and contrast levels and curves adjustment to each one of them. And so in the first image here, I have this darkness in the bottom that I don't want to be so dark. And I can apply a, a brightness and contrast adjustment level. And so if we go to the layers panel, we'll hit the little black and white cookie and then choose brightness and contrast. We'll use the properties panel to make the adjustment and we can increase the brightness in the image or the contrast or both. And so if you increase the brightness, you're gonna move the slider to the right you'll notice the entire image becomes brighter. And so if I'm just focusing on the bottom half of the image until I get the detail in the bottom half the way I want it to be down here, I blow out the top part of the picture. And so it doesn't mean I can't use this adjustment. It just means I'd have to maybe use a layer mask and paint areas away. And so when you create an adjustment layer, you can edit the layer mask that's automatically created. And so if I grab black and the paintbrush, and I'm gonna make the opacity maybe like 25% or so, and make sure you have a soft edge, you can kind of come back in these two bright areas and you can paint black, which would make the adjustment disappear. And you can paint the texture back in, in the areas that have been washed out. And so you can go through and you can kind of move them back in to where they should be. And it's, it's one option to get what you need. Let's do the same adjustment on the Aberdeen sign. And so we have the same issue here. We have bright areas and we have dark areas. And so if we apply uh, an adjustment layer and choose brightness and contrast, and then we increase the brightness, we're going to end up eventually seeing the sign, it didn't even do us such a good job. And when we're done, we wash out the sky. And so I guess in theory, you could try to come back and paint the sky back in, but that's more work than it's worth. There are better options than going through the whole process to kind of paint the image back in, especially when the brightness didn't really do such a good job on the Aberdeen sign anyway. And let's do that one more time. And so we can apply an adjustment layer and we'll choose brightness and contrast. I will increase the brightness and so I'm just going to focus on this left side here that's too dark and wait for it to get where I want it to be, maybe right there. And then just like the others I have to come back and I have to do some work to paint in the areas that started to fade. In this image it's not actually too bad because the sky has no texture in it so I just need to get like the trees back in and then because I'm using a brush that has a soft edge and it um, has a very low opacity, um, I'm not getting streaks. You can't tell where I've painted back in. I'm slowly adding the color back into the image. 
So let's jump back over to the first image again. So I'm going to drag the brightness and contrast adjustment. I want to put it below the background layer, so I have to make it a real layer. And so now we go back to the original, and let's talk about the levels. Levels are my personal favorite because I think they're the easiest to use. And so when you apply a levels adjustment, you will select the layer you want it to affect, hit the new adjustment layer button at the bottom of your layers panel, and then choose levels. The properties panel will activate. And what's cool about the level adjustment is that you can control how much of the image is contained with the darkest black color and the lightest white color. And so just as a, as a rule of thumb, when you're looking at your image, whether it has an issue like this one or not, you want to slide your black slider on the left hand side over until your first peak on the histogram. And so there's no, there's no color in the image that has the darkest black color. And so what I can do is I can slide this over a little bit and you can see as I move it more and more to the right, more and more of the image becomes the darkest black color. And obviously that's too much. But what you want to do is you want to slide it over so that you have the darkest black in the image because you want to have the brightest whites and the darkest darks and, and a slew of midtone values. And so usually what you'll do is you'll just slide it over until you hit the first spike in your histogram. Now I don't have to do it with the whites because it's already over there. The more I move the white slider to the left, more and more the image will become the lightest white color possible. The real impact with your levels adjustment occurs uh, with your midtone slider. And so if you slide the midtone to the right, the image becomes darker and darker and darker. And if you slide it to the left, the midtone values become lighter and lighter. And that is what allows us to open up the, the dark valley type area of the slot canyon without it affecting the sky. In this image, it's not affecting the sky very much at all. And so you can use that. Let's close the properties panel to make the adjustment so you can see the textures and the detail in the dark area a little bit better. And if we compare that to the original, you can see that I made an adjustment. But it's, it's subtle, but it is much better than it was. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and move that below the original layer. And then let's apply a levels to the Aberdeen one. I think the Aberdeen one is a really low resolution image, so it still might not look great even with the curves or the levels, but we'll give it a try. And so we can select layer zero, select the new adjustment layer, and then choose a levels adjustment. Uh, in our image here, I'm going to start off by sliding the dark or the black slider to the right. And I'm going to move the white slider a little bit to the left. And then you can slide the mid-tone slider to the right to make the whole image darker. Or to the left, it starts to open up the mid-tone values. And so comparing this, so it still didn't do such a good job because it's not a very good image. But if we compare the adjustment with the levels to the brightness, I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of I want to get rid of where I painted back in. If we compare the brightness and contrast adjustment where I lose all of the detail in the light areas to the levels, I get almost the same result in the area that I wanted to brighten to begin with, the dark area, but I get to keep some of the sky value. Let's do it one more time. Let's do it with this image of the castle. And so we can select layer zero, select a levels adjustment, in this example, I slide my dark slider to the right to make the darkest dark areas. I'm going to move the bright one over a little bit. And then you can move the slider in the midtones. This one creates a drastic change, right? Um, you can slide it whichever direction you need to go until the midtone values meet your expectations. And if we compare that to the original, you can see it started off pretty dark, but we were able to lighten up the image. Let's do it one more time, but this time let's talk about the curves adjustment. And so go ahead and select layer zero on the first image. And this time hit the new adjustment layer and choose curves. And so on the curves adjustment, you can adjust, you can just various number of things. And so you see you have a black and white slider like the, the levels. And so if I move my slider up, you can see I have less and less black in the image. I'm making it closer and closer to white, all right? And so on the bottom slider here, you can see the actual colors in the image. And you can say the darkest darks should be the darkest darks. Let's zoom in here. 
So these represent the colors in my image, and this slider vertical represents uh, what the color should be. And so if I take the slider here, and I take the darkest part of the image, and I slide it up, all the darkest part of the image, they're starting to wash out and become lighter and lighter. If we repeated that on the right-hand side, so all the lightest part of my picture right now is assigned to be the lightest part of the histogram, if I bring it down, the image will get darker and darker and darker. Um, what I would like you to do at the Art1280 level of Photoshop is to experiment with changing different values in the image. And so if you grab anywhere along this line, and so let's zoom back in here, I can grab these colors. And so they were relatively light colors here, and they're assigned as relatively light colors, but I could take it and I could drag it down, and the further I pull it down, it makes all of those values darker, or I could bring it up. And a benefit of this is you can adjust a curve instead of just lines. And so you can pull the curve back and forth in the different darkness and lightness areas until you achieve the desired look that you want. And so if I think that the image in the dark areas is too dark, I can grab a relatively dark area of the curve to the left hand side and I can pull it up and as I pull it up it's making all those colors lighter. Now notice how I flipped it over the, the next dot in my curve. That creates weirdness so don't do that. So you want to kind of make sure it's still a continuous line going uphill as, as I'll describe it as. Um, you can take the colors and you can shift them. You can move them right to left and it adjusts the placement of the color in the line. And so now if we compare that to the original, we were able to lighten, subtly lighten the colors in the bottom without really affecting the colors at the top. And so what we really want to do is take the dark colors and pull them higher and that will make the image lighter and lighter. Okay, Let's do that again with the Aberdeen. Again, the Aberdeen is not a good example because it's not a very good image to begin with, but we'll give it a try. And so we'll select layer 0, hit the new adjustment layer icon, and then choose curves. You can see that we have the same uh, straight line that's on an angle. The bottom represents the colors in our picture. The vertical represents what do we want them to be. And then we have a histogram in the middle. And so if I take the black slider on the left and I raise it, all the colors in the image start to wash out. Um, but what you can do is you can move the curve. So you have dark colors and then you pop and bring colors around it out. I'm going to raise this one and see you can bring the colors of Aberdeen in without destroying the colors in the background. And I think this is the best result we've gotten from the Aberdeen uh, image. We have, we can see the words welcome to Aberdeen a little bit better, but we still have a lot of texture in the sky. Let's give that one more try with the castle image. So hit the new adjustment layer, choose curves. I am going to recognize that we should pull this into the right a little bit, just like we did on our levels panel. So I want the histogram to start. I want this histogram to start or line up with my first point. And so if I have a gap, it means I don't have any color in the image that is the darkest dark color. And then you can play around with the curve and you can, as I pull down, I'm making light colors go darker. And so you can move it. What I would recommend is moving it very slightly so you don't want it to go very far from the original line because the original line is, is your real color. And so as you're moving the image, don't do too much. Do small changes. The more you pull down, the crazier the colors are going to get because they're trying to get farther away from their original color. And the original color is the right color. And so the further you go away from it, the crazier it's going to look. So stay close to the original and just make slight adjustments in the color. And so now if we compare the two, we can see that we were able to keep almost all the detail in the, the middle with the light yellow trees and the dark green trees and the shade on the left hand side is what really popped when we use the curve adjustment layer.